In today's video, we are talking about blood tests other than PSA. You know, we want to make sure that men are getting their you know, CBC, their metabolic panel. You're looking at these different tests. And today we're going to break them down with Dr. Mark Scholz. He's a 30 year medical oncologist who focuses solely on prostate cancer, but he makes sure that all of his patients go through these various blood tests so that he not only gets a baseline, but he can see how their body is acting outside of prostate. So today we're going to get into the details of what those tests are. So in today's video, we are talking about blood tests that are really essential for an annual physical for a man to get. Now, I think a lot of times on this channel, we talk about blood tests, we always think about PSA, and obviously that's very important, but there are other tests that men should get. And I think that when people get cancer, they get so focused on the cancer that a lot of times they forget just how important an annual physical is. So can we talk about just some of the other blood tests? Can you list them out really quickly? And then we can do kind of a more uh, intricate look at each one and the importance of it. Yeah. I'm glad we can cover this. The false assumption I see in my patients uh, is that the, the annual physical blood tests are sort of a panel that everyone does, and that really isn't the case. Most of medicine was originally set up to solve a, an existing problem. An annual physical is a little counterintuitive. You're looking for problems. Who wants to look for problems? But our health is such a valuable asset that when problems exist, if they're detected at an earlier stage, they're easier to treat and you get better outcomes. That's the thinking behind doing an annual physical. The blood test panel that we typically use incorporates four major panels. One's called a CBC, uh, which looks for anemia and immune issues. Another is called the basic metabolic panel, which covers kidney and electrolytes, that's like your sodium and potassium levels. The hepatic panel, which uh, your liver is what's detoxing things and it oftentimes is the first thing that can be injured if you're having a bad reaction to something. And then the cholesterol panel or the lipid panel to uh, see where your cholesterol levels are at. Typically a part of the annual physical is to get a urine analysis, make sure that uh, there's no infection or blood in the urine that would suggest there's an underlying problem. One of the things that I realize with these different panels is patients are going, they, as you mentioned, they go to the doctor, they don't even know what they're getting, and then they said, yeah, it's fine, your numbers are in range, and they don't even know what test it is. So should they go with a list? I mean, we have a men's health checklist that we will um, have in the comment section, but the, should they just bring in a list and discuss this with their doctor? And is this typically covered by insurance? They should definitely have an idea of what you're supposed to be looking for. If you don't look for it, you're not going to find it. And the list that we provide, I think, is very useful. Medicare is covering screening for an annual physical now. That uh, is a one-time thing once a year. Historically, insurance would not cover screening because medicine is set up to solve problems, not to look for problems. This uh, exception and during the annual physical uh, is covered by Medicare and some private insurances. So besides those panels, you know, as men age, you know, the body doesn't produce certain, you know, vitamins and all sorts of things that men need in order to function. And all that does need to be monitored. So what type of things outside of that panel or those, you know, different tests um, need to be done in order to make sure that they're really at, you know, the optimum levels and we're just making sure that you're, you're doing your due diligence. The aging body will occasionally, uh, especially specific glands like your thyroid or, or your testicles, will have reduced function as you get older. And sometimes that, can, uh, that function can be, become so reduced that it's a serious problem. So you get a deficiency of thyroid or a deficiency of, uh, of testosterone. And so it's uh, very logical during the annual physical to run those levels in men that are over, say, over 50 or 60 years old. Deficiencies of certain common vitamins can be a very real issue. Uh, as we get older, our stomachs don't absorb B12 as well. So you can be deficient in B12, which if that's advanced, can be very serious, cause memory problems. And then of course, uh, deficiencies in vitamin D. As we get older, our skin doesn't convert sunlight into vitamin D as efficiently. So typically, in addition to the panels we mentioned, uh, checking for testosterone, thyroid levels, vitamin D and vitamin B12 would be a routine in our practice. Before I get to my next question, I just wanted to remind you that we're having an in-person conference coming up in September, and it is a great way to get your questions answered by world-renowned experts. Also, click that subscribe button because it's a great way to stay updated in the world of prostate cancer. And if you would like to support us, you can donate at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to my conversation with Dr. Scholz. 
I, I appreciate that we talk about testosterone levels so often because I, I don't know how many prostate cancer patients don't know their testosterone levels and they only check it during really treatment or hormone therapy, but it is not a common thing that men are getting checked and it's such a light bulb for men when they go on, when they're not in a hormone therapy state and they're going, wait a minute, why am I feeling so tired? And you know, we I think we're now in an age where we encourage men with um, testosterone replacement therapy and things like this, but men not even knowing what their baseline is, is really an issue. So it's definitely a life-changing moment for a lot of these men as they go into that. So going back to the original panels, um, you know, when it comes to like CBC and things like that, what exactly is that? Because when I hear that as a layman, CBC, I go, okay, well, I understand it's a blood test, but really how would it affect my life? There's layers of information that are associated with these different blood tests, but let's just, for simplicity today, just talk about maybe the number one or number two uh, most common things that someone might see as an abnormality. Uh, for the CBC, which is, stands for complete blood count, you're getting a test of your white count w as well as the subgroups of white cells. You're getting a test to see how many red cells you have, which uh, diminished amount of red cells means you have anemia. And you're also checking the blood clotting component called platelets. Uh, so let's just talk about the ramifications of anemia in a man. If women become anemic, it's often thought to be due to iron deficiency, due to uh, menstruation, they're losing iron, uh, and they need iron replacement. If men have a microcytic anemia, that means that small cell-sized red cells in the context of an anemia, which means a deficiency of red cells, hemoglobin and hematocrit are the things that measure the number of red cells. That is a sign that the man is losing iron somewhere, and the most common reason for that is blood loss, occult blood loss from the gastrointestinal tract. So it mixes in with the stool, and people don't see the blood loss. Men who have anemia uh, should be worked up for iron deficiency, and if they have iron deficiency, they need to be evaluated for the possibility of an underlying colon cancer or a stomach ulcer. So that's what the CBC brings to the table, at least in the most obvious sense. If your CBC levels are off, like let's say the blood clouds are lower, are those automatic processes? Are those doctors gonna automatically check for those things? Any well-trained doctor should uh, easily recognize what's called iron deficiency anemia. And this is seen more commonly in women's health for the reason I already mentioned. But colon cancer is, uh, is a common issue. And of course, we've talked about screening, so this shouldn't come up in people that are getting their cholagards or their colonoscopies. Development of an anemia, an iron deficiency anemia, out of the blue in a man uh, should, to any medical professional, signal the need to look for iron deficiency and uh, make sure that there's not a, uh, a cold colon cancer that's been bleeding into the intestinal tract. What about the metabolic panel with this kidney function? So when you get basic metabolic panel, they check your creatinine. That's the, there are seven components to the basic metabolic panel, but they're not all equally important. The, the one thing that is most relevant is the serum creatinine. This is a protein in our blood that is filtered through the kidneys at a steady state. And if the kidney filtering function is diminished, creatinine backs up in the blood. So a normal creatinine is going to run around 1 to 1.2, maybe 0 0.8. So if someone comes in with a creatinine of, say, 1.5, that is an indication of diminished renal function. And why would that be? Well, in prostate cancer patients, in the more advanced stages, we worry about the prostate cancer growing large enough to obstruct the flow of urine between the kidneys and the bladder, and where the, there's a backup of urine, it's called hydronephrosis in the kidneys. For general purposes, uh, the, kid, the uh, creatinine levels are followed in people that have high blood pressure, and you can see kidney damage with age in people that have uncontrolled high blood pressure. The serum creatinine is the number one test in the basic metabolic panel that doctors are looking at for possible relevant health problems. So what about the hepatic panel for the liver? When people are taking medications or if they have viral illnesses, your liver is often your first line of defense. And there are two tests that are very sensitive to liver damage. One's called AST and the other is called ALT. These very sensitive indicators, literally you can see if someone had a viral illness recently, their AST, ALT may be slightly elevated. But we scrutinize it most closely because if people are on pharmaceuticals, if those medications are uh, in any way irritating the liver, those two blood tests are the first ones that will start to rise and corrective measures need to be implemented if they're 
out of the normal range. So you mentioned a urinary analysis. You know, this is uh, typically through the, you know, somebody peeing into a cup. It's not a blood test, but it, you mentioned it within this context. So I'm curious, why is this so important? And specifically, why should prostate cancer patients make sure they're getting this? Well, we think of prostate cancer patients as relatively healthy people. So while they're under our purview, we, we're, we don't want someone to spin out of control with some other health problem that could have been prevented if it was detected earlier. Urine analysis, when people think of that, it's, it's most commonly used in the context of an infection, and uh, UAs are very good for figuring out what type of an infection, how to treat it. But in part of the annual physical, uh, since bladder cancer is a, is a silent process and like many cancers, if they're not caught early, can be dangerous. Urine analysis uh, is very sensitive for detecting small amounts of blood. And just as we talked about blood being in the gastrointestinal tract from colon cancer, uh, as one way to detect colon cancer, the presence of any blood in the urine uh, justifies a workup. Take a deeper dive into looking whether there's any early bladder cancer on the wall of the bladder that's um, leaching a little bit of blood into the urine. So the next one is the lipid panel, and this is you know talking about cholesterol. I think in that if you can you know answer the difference between good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, I think this is a common question we see on our channel, specifically in our men's health conference. Like all these panels, there's usually one. Uh, particular tests in the array of tests that are included in the panel that stands out as having the most value and the most relevance. And with a cholesterol panel, it's the LDL level. That's the so-called bad cholesterol. And that's the uh, number that responds to your diet, to your medications, and higher numbers predict for greater problems with coronary artery disease, strokes, and, th and the like. So just like in prostate cancer, where we check PSA levels to see where we stand with the prostate and the prostate cancer, doctors who are managing lipids and cardiovascular disease check the LDL level of the cholesterol panel. Typically, if someone has a history of coronary artery disease, you're shooting to get your uh, bad cholesterol, your LDL cholesterol, under. 50 or 60, something in that range. The HDL, the so-called good cholesterol, is uh, not something you can change with treatment, but it is an indicator of what your risk is. People with very high L HDL levels have less likelihood of ca cardiovascular disease, whereas those with low HDL levels are at greater risk for cardiovascular disease. But I focus mainly on the LDL because that's something we can impact with treatment or diet. Many of these prostate cancer patients are on various treatments, and some of those will affect some of these panels as far as you know platelets and things like that. Um, how important is it that if a patient is on treatment, they're talking to their doctor and they're making sure that they're getting some of these panels? Well, one would hope that in people that are getting active treatment, that the physicians are ordering these panels, not just as part of an annual physical, but as a part of ongoing care. They're the same panels that are used to monitor if someone goes on a new medication, it's, or if you start a cholesterol pill, it's, it's typical to rerun your uh, lipid panel six weeks after starting the pill to run a hepatic panel six weeks after starting the pill, make sure that there's no irritation of the liver from the new pharmaceuticals that you've started. A lot of these things do get handled in the normal course of ongoing management. Paradigm with prostate cancer patients, many of these men are on active surveillance. They have a very low-grade prostate cancer that we'll be watching for many, many years without any intervention, and they'll get a PSA twice a year. But the idea is in these otherwise healthy people to not miss out on uh, an easy fix if some other problem starts to surface. And outside of prostate cancer, what age should these men start getting these tests? That's a good question because I don't manage men, you know, typically that are younger than age 40. But cardiovascular disease can occur in men in their late 30s and early 40s. It's very logical to start getting an annual physical, uh, perhaps at age 35. And people certainly do it younger than that, although you know, youth does cover a multitude of sins. And the likelihood of finding problems in these areas is very, very small in younger people. The other blood tests we talked about today are important to get a baseline on. You know, it's important to go get your annual physical. I think a lot of patients who are in prostate think, oh, I go to the doctor, they must be checking everything. But a PSA test and a checkup with your doctor to see how your prostate cancer treatment is going is not the same thing as going and getting an annual physical with your primary care physician. 
all of these baseline, you know, metabolic panel, these different blood tests that he mentioned are really important to know. And it's important to go ahead and get that annual test because while you are, you know, taking care of prostate cancer, you want to make sure you're taking care of your entire body and that you're going and making sure that you're getting screened for all these other things as well. Now, I know it can be kind of daunting and annoying to just have to go get all these blood tests in a urine sample, but trust me, you're important. Your health is important. So advocate for yourself and remember to maybe bring somebody with you. We're going to go ahead and put the list of all the things that we would like you to check in an annual physical in the comment section. It's just a little PDF that you can print out and take to your doctor and you can just check them off one at a time. We're trying to make this as simple as possible. But it's very important that while we're focusing on fighting prostate cancer, nothing else gets missed. Please go to the doctor, get your annual checkup. You are so important. We care about you. And we want to make sure that you are taking care of your health as optimally as possible. Now, if you have questions about these blood tests or about anything in the realm of prostate cancer, BPH, prostatitis, you can go ahead and contact our helpline at pcri.org forward slash helpline. These are prostate cancer patients who have been through the process of prostate cancer and what it's like choosing a treatment after treatment and such, dealing with side effects. And they can give you a lot of information so that you can be empowered to go to your doctor's office know what your questions are ahead of time and get the information that helps you. Also, if you'd like more information about prostate cancer or men's health, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we come out with new videos just like this every week. Now, please remember, most of all, you're not alone, and I hope you have a great week.